All right, so I have this least squares regression problem, and it's taken straight from the last question on the final exam of fall 2018. Um, so it's a very straightforward question. It says, consider the data points given, find the best fit line for these data points, and then it says, enter your answer in the space below. Uh, so as long as you know the process for doing these kinds of problems, this is like free points for you, right? So I've, I've sketched out the problem. We have these three data points here at negative two, six, one, negative three, and four, negative six. And our goal, our task is to find the equation for this line of best fit. So you guys know lines take this equation, take this form, y equals mx plus b. And so our goal is to find these coefficients, this coefficient m, and then the y-intercept b of this line. So we have this form y equals mx plus b and the first step is going to be we want to plug in these data points so that we can get three equations with two unknowns m and b so let's do that so the first data point that we have is negative 2 6 and plugging that in for x and y we get y is equal to 6 when x is equal to negative 2 plus b and so this, you can simplify it a little bit and get 6 equals negative 2m plus b. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other two data points. So for 1, negative 3, we get y equals 3. I'm just plugging into this equation up here, x and y. y equals a negative 3. When x equals 1 plus b. And then we can simplify that just to say negative 3 equals m plus b. And I'm going to do the same thing for the third one. And so here we have three equations with two unknown variables m and b. So you might be tempted to say, hey, let's just solve this the way we always have and make a augmented matrix and row reduce and get our unknown variables m and b. So if we did that, let's first construct, let's first get this in the form a, x, equals b. Let's try to test that, see what happens. a would be what matrix? Well, it'd be the coefficients to the unknown variables, right? We would have an m column and a b column. It doesn't matter the order as long as you're consistent. So this would be like our m column, and this would be our b column. So we have negative 2, 1, 4, and we have 1, 1, 1, right? And then our x vector is our unknown variables but we have to make sure that they match with the order m and b and then our b vector is the right hand side of the equation here it's on the left hand side but you you guys understand so b is um six negative three negative six six negative three negative six all right so what happens if we just make an augmented matrix representation of this system ax equals b what happens if we just go negative 2, 1, 1, 1, 4, 1, and then make the augmented column our b, 6, negative 3, negative 6. Isn't this the way we've always been solving for our unknown variables in a system of equations? Well, yeah, the only problem is now when you row reduce this, you're going to find out that it is inconsistent. And that should make some sense because if it was consistent, right, if we had... Um, like a unique solution, for example, if we had one M and B that satisfies all three of these equations, that would mean our line of best fit actually just passes through every line. So I suppose that's possible, but that's most likely not going to be the case because we want to find the best fit, not, not exactly like a perfect fit. So this is going to be inconsistent. So instead, what, do we, what can we do? Well, earlier in the class, we would get to this point, we would row reduce, we would find a pivot in the augmented column, and we would say, oh, it's consistent. And then we would just like, drop our pencils and move on with our day and say it's inconsistent we can't do anything about it but now we kind of can do something about it so let's let's talk about this let's do a little aside if we have this plane representing the column space of the matrix a this matrix here well since the matrix equation ax equals b for this b vector is inconsistent that means the vector b that means the vector b if i can draw it here is not in the column space of a right it's inconsistent so like here's 
one column vector of A, and here's another column vector of A, right, say it has two columns. Uh, B is not in the column space of A, that means you can't write B as a linear combination of these column vectors, right, because B is not in the plane spanned by the columns of A. So instead, what we can do now, we know how to do projections. We know how to find vectors in a certain subspace that are as close as possible to the vector not in that subspace. And how do we do that? We do projections. So the whole point of these least squares regression problems is that we have a B not in the column space of A, we project it on, and then we find the weights of the linear combination of the columns of A that get us to that projected vector. So, and then you guys know all those fancy schmancy formulas that have to do with projections and uh, like the closest vector here, like find the weights of the blah, 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 blah. And so if you wanna get the derivation of those equations, I made a video about it, you can watch that. Or you can just memorize this formula that I'm about to give to you. And so basically AX equals B inconsistent, but A transpose A X. And I'm gonna put this little arrow, this whatever on top because it, it's our least square solution. If that equals A transpose B, boom. This, always consistent. Always consistent. Okay, and where does this come from? Well, it was in the video where I derived the equation for the standard matrix of any projection transformation. This was one of the lines in that derivation. So you can watch that video to get some intuition for this. But basically, this is how we're going to find our least square solution. So this vector x here, x is our least square solution, and it is still the form m and b. So since this is always going to be consistent, like a transpose a, just another matrix. a transpose b, just another vector. So we have a matrix times our least square solution equals a vector, and I'm saying it's always consistent, so then we can get our m and b. So to actually solve this, the process is, you write out y equals mx plus b, you plug in your data points, you get your three equations, and then you find your a matrix, which is the coefficients to the unknowns m and b. You get your b vector, which is just the constant side of the equation, and then you plug it into here. So we got to find a transpose a, which is just some matrix, and we got to find a transpose b, which is just some vector. And then we can row reduce the system, which is going to be always consistent, and find our least square solution, M and B. So A transpose A, what does that look like? Well, we know what our A matrix is. It's this guy right here, or you could say this guy. This is A. So A transpose A, well, A transpose, the first column becomes the first row. A negative 2, 1, 4, and then 1, 1, 1. So that's A transpose. Multiply that by A negative 2, 1, 4, 1, 1, 1. This matrix product is defined, right, because this is 2 by 3, and this is 3 by 2. So it's going to spit out, what, a 2 by 2 matrix? And you can do the matrix multiplication by yourself. I'm just going to tell you that it's 21, 3, 3, 3. Okay, you can check my math if you want. And then A transpose B is... Similarly, you just do A transpose, first row becomes first column, second row becomes second column, third row becomes third column, and then that times our B vector, well, this is our B vector here, 6, negative 3, negative 6, and again, you can check my math, um, but it's just negative 39, negative 3. Okay, and remember, this is going to be our governor. Let me box this up. This is very important. This is our, our equation that we're going to solve. It's always going to be consistent. And so we found A transpose A, so we can write that down. 21, 3, 3, 3. Times our least square solution, which is MB, equals A transpose B. And then A transpose B we found to be this vector here. Negative 39, negative 3. Okay, this we can put in an augmented matrix, row reduce it, and we will get a, uh, an answer. So this is 21, 3. So I'll set this up, and I'll row reduce it, and I'll be right back. 
All right, I row reduced this augmented matrix all the way down to reduced row echelon form. So I can read off our solution, M and B. This tells us that M equals negative two and B equals one. Perfect, now we can make our least squares regression line, right? Because remember Y equals MX plus B. And we found our M and B that make this line fit the data the best. And so then we can plug in Y equals negative two X plus one. Boom, that's our answer. Let's go up and make sure that makes a little bit of sense. We had over here, we just found y equals negative two x plus one. That's our least squares regression line. And that looks pretty accurate, right? I mean, just by sketching it, this line looks like it, it intercepts at uh, y equals one, and then the slope is about negative two. So that's the process. Okay, in summary, the process is always the same. So you're given some data points that you want to find a least squares regression line to. So you write your general equation y equals mx plus b. And then you take your data points and you plug it in, right? You plug in for x and y each data point and you get this system of equations. You're going to have x amount of equations where x is the number of data points that you have. And then you can construct a matrix A, right, which is like your coefficients to m and b. And you can construct a matrix B, which is the constant side of the system of equations. And then you use this formula, A transpose A times the least square solution, X hat equals A transpose B. And this is always going to be consistent. And so to solve this, A transpose A is just some matrix. So A transpose A, you can compute that matrix product. And you can compute this matrix times vector, A transpose B, and get that vector. And then you solve the system, a matrix times your X hat equals a vector, which is right here. And then you can put that in an augmented matrix, you row reduce it down, and you get your solutions your least square solution m and b. So in this case, you got m equals negative two and b equals one. We plug that into our equation and we're good to go. All right, I hope that clears things up um, and I will see you for some more example problems.